Welcome to the Nolan Build Shop. Today, we are gonna build an x base table. So sit back, enjoy yourselves, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and when you're done, leave a comment, let me know what you think. All right, guys, let's get at it. All right, as we start every build, we're gonna start with the milling process. I do a process what's called skip planing, and basically that's taking light passes in the planer because my jointer isn't big enough. Then I move over to the track saw, where I rip down all my boards uh, this way to get my glue line rips versus using the table saw and the joiner because the boards are so big. After that, I take everything over to the miter saw and chop things down to length. That makes it more, more easier for me to, uh, to work with to cut things on a table saw as you see me doing. Now that I have my pieces cut. All right. Uh, what I've done here is I have a big piece of cardboard so in order to get my X spaces, I'm basically measuring the height of my table from the floor to the bottom of the table, measuring the width that I want the table to be, and then I'm bringing it in five inches of where I want it to be all the way around, and then taking my wood and draw my lines out here and now what I'm going to do is when you draw your lines out make sure you go from where you want to be on this end of it the outside edge here and then cross back over to the outside edge on the bottom piece don't go down here and mark five inches so make sure you're using that and then take your wood to scrub your lines of where it all falls out and then that will allow us to uh, take our mark, transfer it up here, so that we can do our half lap joint. So that is what I'm about to do now. And uh, let's see here, all lined up. All in my red marks here. Once I uh, get these marks on here, I'll come back with a square and transfer these lines, make sure they're good. All right, so that's one. those we can transfer lines and make a half lap all right I'm using the depth stop feature on the DeWalt Meyer saw to create this half lap basically just making a bunch of passes and then running it back and forth until I get a smooth surface All right, now I am using the track saw to make easy work of uh, making this X parallel and straight, uh, ensuring that I will not have a wobbly table. So um, 
If you have a track saw, this is great. If you don't, you can create one using a a guide and a uh, a circular saw. Now I am using the Domino DF700 to put in some 8mm dominoes to create this glue up so that I can have seamless joinery and have no exposed uh, dowels or screw joints in this table base. Uh, just taking it up a notch on the table itself. Um, now you'll see me using the domino to get the, uh, the middle stretcher in and I had to pretty much set up a jig to give myself alignment to be able to uh, do this and that was done by a series of uh, lines and marks on there which you'll see here where I have all my lines lined up to be able to transfer these marks to in order to get a clean uh, assembly. All right, now it is time for glue up. All that you saw before was just dry fitted. Nice, clean, tight joints and dry fitted. Now that everything was tested and tried and true, the glue up has proceeded. Uh, pretty much, this is one of those moments where you're trying to move as fast as you can before the glue sets up and get everything put in place and then put the clamps on it to lock it in and get a good solid glue up. And always remember, make sure you clean up as much glue as possible uh, before it dries with a cloth and a wet and some water, wet rag, and uh, make the sanding process a lot easier when it comes to getting ready to finish your, uh, your project. All right, on to the tabletop. We're going to throw some dominoes in this guy and add some glue to the joints and pull her together. Make sure that when you're doing your glue ups that you get enough glue on both sides of the joints to give yourself a strong glue joint. And when you're clamping your tabletop together, make sure that you check your flatness while you're going because too much pressure on one clamp or another can cause your tabletop to be out of flatness and cause you a lot of headaches and a lot more work to get it back to being flat. Sometimes even cutting it back out and uh, re re redoing the glue up. And as you see here, I'm using the Traxxaw TS75 to uh, cut the table to length. That is my preferred method. That is the entire reason why I bought the TS75 is to cut tabletops to length and to width and to rip my boards uh, when doing uh, tabletops. Alright, now I'm breaking out the Rotex 150. We're going to knock down all the uh, excess glue that was coming out of the seams. And I know that this can be done by a scraper, a hand plane, and so many other methods. But this is my preferred method. The Rotex really knocks it down really quickly. Um, and it's just just the way to go for me now enjoy the shop shenanigans ah. 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 Pick things up and I put them down. Oh, I can put them down now without breaking something.
Jesus Christ. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. All right, so I'm using a DeWalt uh, router and a quarter inch uh, down cut spiral bit to router in the grooves for uh, some C channel, which provide the same function as a breadboard in, basically keeping the table from warping over time. Um, when I do uh, install these C channels, I like to recess them uh, down into the table so that they're not uh, below the actual bottom of the table. I just think it's a nicer finish. That's what you see me doing here. I'm hogging out the material in the middle now to basically allow for the C channel to sit in recess with the table, flush to the table. All right, so now that we're done right around this groove, now we're going to drill some holes in the C channel. Basically, what I'm doing in the C channel, instead of having an oblong hole, I'm doing an oversized hole in order to give the wood the ability to have movement back and forth. So I will use a quarter 20 screw and a fender washer and that will allow wood movement over the lifespan of the table and here you see me I always paint my uh, C channel black I don't like to leave it raw metal so I just go give it a quick coat of some black paint and give it a nice finish and here I am threading in some threaded inserts to take the quarter 20 uh, screws that I will be securing the C channel down with. Ah, yes, fits like a glove. This is just one of those satisfying moments when it all works together. As you notice, at the ends of my C channel, there's space there to allow for wood movement over time. And now you see the pains and joys of having a small shop, taking things in and outside of my kitchen to be able to have space to maneuver. Now we're gonna do a little bit of sanding, break the edges on all the corners and get this thing prepped and prepared for a uh, finish. But before finish, I am going to uh, install some figure eight uh, fasteners that will allow me to secure the tabletop to the table base and allow wood movement to still happen over the lifespan of the table. And I also like to install leveling feet on the bottom of all my table bases just so that I can have the ability to level the table out just in case the client's floor is not level. Now I am uh, applying some chalk paint by Krylon um, to try out this new finish, this new technique that um, I will be doing on this table base, which is it's like an antiquing uh, type of uh, finish. It kind of looks like a whitewash, but it's more like a stain wash. So you'll see the outcome in the end, but it really, really turned out nice. You now see after the paint is dry, I am applying stain and wiping it off immediately. And basically it's giving it this, this beautiful grain texture look. So this is solid oak and yes, it's painted, but now this uh, grain is popping through from the stain soaking into where the paint did not uh, fully uh, cover. And now you'll see me applying a clear coat with my Fuji Semi Pro 2. Uh, basically, I'm just doing a satin clear coat. I'm going to do two coats on here, but you'll only see me do one coat for video purposes. But that will uh, secure and finish the table base off. And now that we've finished the table base, we're going to move back to the table top where I am going to apply some roundovers on the bottom of the table and the top of the table using the cordless Ryobi router, which this is pretty much what it's good for, is putting on the roundovers. And now I'm going to apply 
the finish to the table, which is uh, Rubio Monocoat uh, All Plus 2C Pure. And I'm using the Ryobi Coreless Buffer to apply it. I know you can you can use the card trick and to apply it and you would save uh, material but for me this is easy uh, it gets the Rubio evenly spread out and it gets it into all of the grains what you don't see in this video is that after I use this buffer I use another pad on the buffer to uh, to polish it a little better and in between those two pads I wiped all of the excess off uh, before polishing it for enjoying another one of my builds. Uh, I hope you liked it. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button and comment. Let me know what you guys think about this table build. See you on the next one.